just a wonderful story of Mildred Schwartz. She's a 91-year-old woman from New Jersey. She was evacuated earlier this week. She refused to leave her beloved dog behind. And the fact is, by law, any state that wants FEMA funding, which is basically every state involved in this disaster, must accommodate pets. That is a new law that went into effect after Hurricane Katrina. So if any authority is telling you you cannot take your pet, you turn around and say, "Uh uh-uh, you're wrong, I can, it's the law. And remember that for future disasters as well. Um, I want to go to Micah Kaplan. I understand that your precious two-year-old dog, Arthur, went missing in this superstorm. Uh, Tell us where you are and Let's see some pictures of your dog. We're going to put that up. We're going to try to help you. Micah, tell us the story. Uh, Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm actually bunked down with my friends in Williamsburg right now because I have have no power. Um, I was walking Arthur, my my new beagle, who I just got a week ago. Um, He's a shy little dog, and we were walking at like 3 o'clock before the storm really was going to hit. And a big gust of wind came, and swept him right in his face and he kind of backed out really quick because he got scared and he slipped out of his collar um you know i went down to reach to grab him but at that point he just sprinted um he ran maybe seven avenues away you know farther than i could i could possibly see him you know people saw him as he was going but nobody could quite quite catch up so uh you know, I'm here with my friends. We've been trying to post flyers around everywhere we lost him. I, we went to the police and fire precincts with flyers. We went to, tried to go to all the the, the animal shelters, many of which were closed because they didn't have power. Um, we went up to a Have you tried? Have, have you tried name. Facebook? Have you been Facebooking uh, at all? Yeah, we've tweeting? got a number of Facebook pages, which is, uh, you know, one of the ways how we got on the on the show. Thankfully, actually, I'm, I'm, we're quite surprised and very very happy to see how much exposure that's actually gotten. So, uh, that's actually been the best tool we've we've been able to use so far. And Micah, tell us. I know this is a national program. In fact, it's seen in many many countries. But uh, your your dog went missing. At what corner and which direction did? Uh, so Arthur we were, I, I live at 7th and C, and he sprinted west across 7th all the way to Cooper Union, um, at which point somebody said they saw him go south. So he could okay. be anywhere in the Soho, you know, area. I, I mean, he's new to the city, so I don't know if he knew to come back east, if he went, now, you know, you, south you've, looking, you've or if he it. knew, it, you uh, know, the water you, was... Yeah. It's right around New York University. So if you're a New York right, University right. Yeah, student... I mean, hopefully, I, I mean, I... Yeah. I couldn't really tell, so. Wayne, uh, you're the president of the Humane Society. What should Micah do? Well, I think he's doing a lot of the right things. I mean, you know, posting on Facebook, you know, letting the word out through uh, our Twitter account, at Humane Society, so we can be apprised of it. We'll be working with the other animal welfare agencies, with other emergency management authorities. And our goal is really to hit the streets, uh, hit the, the homes, especially in the flooded areas, and to find these pets who are in need, who are, who are alone, and then reunite them. Uh, so many people did the right thing in this, in this setting, and they took their animals, but it's inevitable with so many thousands of miles here that have been affected, there are going to be cases like this and so many